Hi, I'm Kristen from Scrap Fabric Love, and today I'm making these color block crumb scrap quilt blocks using uh, crumbs and regularly shaped scraps of solid fabrics. So if you're a modern quilter and you have lots of funny shaped scraps of your solid leftovers from your various quilt patterns and you want something to do with them, this video might be for you. So I've done loads of different types of crumb blocks in the past. If you're a longtime subscriber of the channel, you might know I favor one color crumb quilt blocks. So I'm, that's what we're gonna start with. So I'm gonna separate these all out and I have some more elsewhere. And I'm gonna make solid fabric crumb blocks that are one color. However, they might be different shades because I might not have enough yellow of this yellow, for example, to make a whole block, but I might have some more solids that we're going to add to it. So I'll show you as I go along. Hopefully it'll all become clear, but it's just another fun way to use up little bits and pieces if you end up with little things like this. So first off, what is a crumb? Now some people define it as a square or a little rectangle of a certain size. So imagine this corner's cut off like a couple inches by a couple of, by an inch or something, or a couple inches, something like that. I define a crumb as anything that's been trimmed off of anything else I'm doing <laughs> that is big enough to hold a seam. So to me, that that's a little thin. I may or may not use that depending on the mood I'm in. That's definitely big enough for me. That's definitely big enough for me. And I don't really mind what shape they are. I don't need them to be squares or rectangles. I do have a video where I make crumb blocks with just squares and rectangles if you want something to start off with, but I will show you how I do it with funny angle things like this. So, and I'm, and I would even go with, so, so this is like a big thing. So somebody else who uses their scraps differently might be tempted to cut a two and a half inch square out of that and save it for another project. That's totally valid too. But for me, this is, you know, a, a large crumb, large scrap, however you want to call it. The crumbs are really more the small ones, but I use the big ones for these kind of projects as well. So it's hard for you to probably tell on camera, but these are two different red fabrics. They're both solids, but they're different. So I'm going to start with the smaller pile and piece that together and then add this bigger one. And what I've been aiming for in the blocks I've been making with these lately, six inch square. Uh, I've previously done more freeform crumb blocks, units, chunks <laughs> in the past. But for the purposes of this video and for just playing around with the scraps that I have, I've decided to cut them to six inches, but you can make them any size you want. So you could have a five inch, three inch, 10 inch, 20 inch, whatever size you want, it's up to you. There's no set size for this, but the ones you're gonna see me making today are six inches. So I'm gonna start by piecing these and then show you how I add them to this you can see the basic principle for my kind of crumb coasting with these oddly shaped scraps is just to find any two straight edges that are at least as long as each other. One of them can be longer, especially where it's super thin like this. That's fine. And I'll sew these together with my quarter inch seam. And then I'll go along kind of chain piecing different bits in the same way. And there's no set rule for how many I would do at a time. And then I press them each time and trim them to try and get straight edges. So I'm going to sew a few of these and then show you how I press and trim them and then how I add the next piece because these two are way bigger, right? So I'll add those after I'm going to do these two little sets, I think, first and then see where we go. So apologies, I'm trying a new camera angle. It might be too close. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, let me know. My hand's huge. My seam allowance is all wrong there because I was trying to look through the camera instead of right at the sewing. So I'm going to do that one again. Perils of trying to do, make videos while you sew. There we go. Okay. So. Right. So that's not what I wanted either. Okay. 
Right, so I'm gonna trim these two apart. I'm gonna go and press them. And then once it's pressed, hopefully you can see here, I'm gonna try and make straight edges. So this is dangling across, so I would trim here. So that would be gone. And then on this side, I've got a little doggy ear thing here. So I would follow this line down to make it a straight line. And on this one, open it up. Once I've pressed it and got rid of that scraggly thread, I would trim along this line and make it a straight line and along this one and make it a straight line. And then we'll find what we can add it to. All right, here's my super messy cutting mat because I've been making a few of these blocks today. <laughs> and what I'm doing, hopefully you can see, is lining up my ruler along that edge that I told you about, trimming off this bit, that's my waist, and then trimming off this bit here. So then I have something that has got four straight edges that I can join something else to. And so I'll do the same with this one. Massive mess on this cutting mat. I need to clean the cutting mat. I need to change my rotary blade as per usual, guys. Alright. So then I have another one. This one obviously is a triangle, so it's only got three straight sides, but that's fine. We can then join it to the next thing. Okay, so now I've got these two and then this other little thing. So I can choose what I want to join to what. So I could, for example, do that. And then it would kind of make sense to maybe add that there. In this case, sometimes you'll get things that end up in like a long uh, section. I'll probably show you some other footage of me doing another block. Just so you can see that it doesn't always end up the same way. Right now, this is just telling me, oh, that's pretty much the same length, so I might as well put those together. But I could equally have decided to go another way, right? So, but in this case, I'm going to put these two right side together here. And then I'll have to wait until I'm finished with this one to add that other bit on the corner. So in the meantime, not to confuse you because I'm still working with it, that was the one, that plus these two bigger ones here is the one color red. And what I've been doing is basically color blocking inside of a crumb block, essentially. So, but just so that I'm not going super slow, I'm going to start, I'm going to start piecing that other shade of red. I don't know, can you even see on camera? This one's darker than this one. I'm not sure if you can see that, but anyway. So I'm going to piece these two because they've got matching long-ish, like, it's basically straight edges that are the similar length is what we want. If one's a little longer, you can always trim and you'll kind of find your own preferences for that. But <clears throat> that's generally what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna see if there's any other small bits in this other pile. They seem like mostly large-ish bits. I'll leave those for now. Okay, so now I'm gonna trim off this one that I wanted to add that little piece to. And I think I can do that before I even press it because it's just over here. So I'm gonna add it here. And then I'll press the whole thing. All right, so I will cut my thread just so that I can press it, trim it, and show you the next one. So there's those two pressed. It obviously would make more sense to do a bunch of these little units at the same time, but I'm just trying to show you one block being made, but you could be doing loads of these blocks at a time to make it faster. All right, so I'm gonna trim this, both of these. So I'm just finding somewhere that I can cut, basically the longest straight line I can get in any direction is what I'm doing. So if I have to trim little bits off to make that happen, that's fine. I hope you can see. I don't know if this angle is great, to be honest. There we go. It might be too close. So there's that one trimmed up. Yeah, that's better. You can see it there. And then I'll add something else to that. Where'd that other one go? Here it is. 
And then this one, I don't have as much to trim on this one, just this little bit here. And really I don't need to trim that. So that's it, so those two, and then we'll add some more of the same color. Okay, so now I've got bigger, they're still funny shaped things. <laughs> they were cut off for various reasons for various projects. And so I'm just gonna find, I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna match this straight edge with this straight edge. And then this one over here, it's a bit longer than I need, but that's fine. And it, I find it can be good to have longer bits of whatever you're working with and what, when you're doing a crumb block, just so that you don't have all of loads of seams, meeting seams everywhere. I don't mind doing that most of the time, but sometimes it's good to just have a bigger piece that just sort of gives you a break from all the seams. All right, let's just cut this one. Okay, so I pressed these two off camera. They look funny, don't they? So where are my straight lines, right? So this one, I'm gonna cut here. You could choose lots of different ways. And then I might be able to use that bit, might be too thin, we'll see. And then I have to choose what I wanna do here, but what I think I'm gonna do is follow this line, and then I'll end up with this chunk I can use somewhere else. So that can go there. Sorry, my camera's moving. All right, and then I could even put this over there, or we'll see what we end up with this with this one. Once we've trimmed this, so I'm gonna follow this line down here and end up with this. And then I'm gonna follow this line here and I'll just get rid of that. So I've now got these four pieces and I wanna somehow join them all together before I add the other color of red. So I'm just gonna have a look and see what lines up best with what. I think I'm gonna do those two. And I might wait and see because this could then go here. So what I think I'm gonna do is this one with this. And then I've got this one, which I could add to here once we're done. And then I've got this random one, which could fill out a corner somewhere. And that'll make this little bit as big as I can make it for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and piece these two and then that, and then put that on, and then I'll show you where we get to after that. So that's those two joined, and then I've trimmed it, ironed it and trimmed it, and now I'm gonna add this one to here, and then we don't need to worry about little bits like that poking off. If you think about, I guess, the trade-off in terms of little leftover trimmings and things is like how many trimmings would you have left over if you were going to cut all your scraps down to two and a half inch squares or one and a half inch squares or whatever your smallest one is versus the trimmings from something like this so i think you know obviously i think there's less trimmings if i do it this way and i don't have to sit there cutting things down all the time until i'm in the process of piecing which is how i like to work And then I'll press that, and then I can just decide if I want to add a little corner, this little corner. I think I might do that right now before I press it, and then I can cut here, and then I could even maybe put the trimming over there just to use up as much of it as I can, essentially. All right. So I'm going to go press and trim those. So this is how difficult it was to tell the difference between the reds and the different lights. I think this might be darker than this. It might be a mix, but anyway. So I'm gonna pop this one on this corner here, and then I'm gonna move on to the next shade of red, which is definitely different, definitely darker. But anyway, we're gonna do that. Okay, so now I have this funny shaped red center and I'm trying to get 
to, for me, right, six inch block, but again, it can be whatever size you want. So, and it doesn't matter where this is, but I know I some basically need something up this side and this side to make it six inches, if you can see that. So I am going to see what I have here. There's some longer bit pieces in this little pile. So I might, I think I'm going to go, this is the longest straight edge I have here. I don't think this is long enough for, not quite. So I'm going to go and piece this to this. And then there'll be something else that's got to go here and along there, that kind of way. Hopefully this is making some sort of sense. Okay, so now I have this. So I'm going to fill something in here. I've got this one. I think I'll do that. And then we'll see where we are against our six inch and where we need to add. And again, if I was doing this not in a video, <laughs> I would be uh, continuing on adding other crumbs together as I'm doing this. I wouldn't be doing one block and cutting my threads and pressing and coming back. I'm just trying to show you so you can see how one block comes together. So I've pressed and trimmed the straight edges onto that off camera. And then yeah, it's not six inches. Got myself turned around here. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so that's where I am now. So I've got this section, a little corner. So now I've got bigger pieces of this fabric. I don't seem to have any smaller little bits. So I'm gonna add this one here. Uh, so here. And then I'll have some other crumbs created when I trim that off. And I'll see if I have a little one for here and another one for there, basically. Okay, and th so now that's that trimmed with the straight edges, and now it beca becomes a case of where do you put it? <laughs> so every time I put it on here, I'm filling in a different bit, but it's still basically one side and a little bit here, and this is just the bit we'll trim off. So I've got that, which could go here, and that will fill out this little corner. But I feel like I wanna do this first, so that I just need that up there, so that long enough? No. That long enough? Maybe on that side. Yeah, okay. I'm going to do that. Right. So that with that. And then we'll see where we're at. Okay. So now I've got this. So now if I hold this up. I'm trying to make my six inches. I only need this. So I'm gonna go and trim this off and then put something on here and then this block will be done. So here I've got this. I don't actually have a piece that's long enough to go along this. So I'm gonna piece these two and then use that. So that's fine. Then I'm going to do that and see where we're at. Okay, so there's that now. And now I'm going to hold this up again and see, I'm still a bit short. If I hold it a different way, let's see. So I still have a few bits I need to fill in just here now. So it's all right on the other sides, but just this little bit, I need to add something. So I will trim this up and see what I have for there. So this is quite big, but it's long enough. So I'm going to use this and then I'll end up trimming it. But then I still have these other trimmings. So this this red will be the start. The red that's left over from this will be the start of a new block. 
um, which I will then have to put some another red or something else around in order to finish that. I'll, it'll make sense when you see the other blocks that I'm doing. But anyway. So that's it pressed, and I'm just going to see if I can trim that six inches now. I'll do that off camera. Okay, so there it is. Now, ideally, I wouldn't have a little seam like this off on the edge because obviously I'm going to end up sewing into that when I join it to something else. But if, as long as it doesn't happen every time, it's not a huge deal. We can, it'll be fine. I'm sure I've done it before. <laughs> but anyway, so that, and hopefully you can see the lighting. I'm not sure. So I think this was the same as this, and I just saw it wrong. So I have this little bit here that is a different red and then now i've still got these bits of that red left this darker one so i will start a block with them or i might have okay so i, I actually have this other center that i started earlier so i'm going to add these other big pieces to this and see if i can get another six inch red block and then the basic idea is that when i join them together i don't even know yet what it's going to be like but you should have some fabrics meeting each other that are the same and some that are just slightly a different shade. And I might, I don't know if I'm doing a color wash or a rainbow or what I'm doing. But <laughs> anyway, this is what I'm thinking with, with how the blocks are going to kind of fit together. But of course, you could also use just, so I've got some of the dark here and some of the dark there. I could have just done that, right? And had one color crumb block. So I have done that before. Let me find one. I have these. So these. Uh, they're covered in fluff, of course. And the, this one's got that same edge I said we didn't want. But anyway, uh, so these are two that are six inches and they're all the same fabric. So I can't remember what they were left over from. But they're all the same. And then I've got another one that has the little bit that didn't get in here. So this is that same fabric. And then there's two others. So I basically started with this. Everything's covered in fluff. <laughs> this teal and then a bit of this I had left over from something and then built it up with this. And so somehow in the quilt I'm, that I'm thinking of, this would join here. I don't know if that goes there or up here or what, you know, but I mean, they somehow would touch each other, the, the fabrics that are the same. And then we'll see where we go. And then, for example, I have another one that has that same fabric and then it has another blue again. So if you can imagine... I know that's the same as this one. So it would have to be something like this. Right, yeah. So that this one is touching this one and this one is touching this one. Can you kind of, <laughs> let me make this wider so you can see. I don't know if you can kind of get what that might, it'll be weird, but <laughs> like what it might look like. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more in some different colorways so I can just show you. And if you have any questions, that don't don't hesitate to put them in the comments. Obviously, this is just me playing around with some crumbs. So there's definitely different ways to do crumb blocks, but I thought I might as well share what I'm doing in case anyone else uh, wants to give it a try. So I filmed myself making the red block, obviously in real time, and I was trying to talk you through each of the choices I was making. I hope that made sense. But I also filmed me making that three color blue block. So I thought I would show you that in a more sped up way, just so you can see how the different things come together. If you ever want to see anything slower in any of the videos, I'm sure I've said this before, you can go to the little settings cog beside the video description and slow it down if you want to see, you know, if you're not sure about how I'm trimming things or whatever. This is just another example in the blue. So basically, same as before, I'm just finding any straight edges that are roughly the same size as each other, piecing them together. Sometimes there are definitely going to be things that are going to get trimmed off. That's okay. For me, the beauty of these kind of blocks is that I don't have to think about it before I start. I don't have to cut anything to a set size. I can just start sewing things and then I just press and find straight edges and you get into a kind of a flow with it. I get that it's not the process that everyone's going to love and plenty of people I can see here might say it's too fiddly or whatever. But for me, the other way of doing things is too fiddly. So all our brains are different and we all like different things. 
And the way I ended up with such funny shaped scraps in the first place is by doing the way that I like to do foundation paper piecing, uh, which was for another project, uh, where I just sort of cut the, roughly cut the fabric to the size of the patch for that, uh, rather than trying to cut it exactly to the size it's going to be. Um, I've talked in other videos about how I do that, but anyway, that's why my scraps are such funny sizes. Uh, you might not have scraps like these, in which case this probably isn't the block for you, but, uh, Anyway, I thought I would share in case anyone has scraggly bits like this and they hate the idea of throwing them out. It's just a fun kind of playtime block to do. So if you're kind of like, you don't feel like working on a pattern, you don't feel like working on any kind of set project and you just want to clear out that scrap bin, uh, just grab some solid scraps that are the same color and piece them together and don't stress about it and just see what you come up with. And if you don't love it, it doesn't have to be a quilt. It can be a coaster. It can be a zipper pouch. It can be whatever. Uh, so you don't have to keep going with it. So just something fun to try. And I do find it quite relaxing when I get into the flow of this. Okay, so here's where I've got to. I'm going to show you in sort of color groupings, I guess. So here's the only yellow one I've done. <laughs> so this is the kind of color block I was aiming for. It was kind of like all the yellows in the one shade and then a bit more uh, of a different shade. So I quite like that one. And then I've got, let me see if you've seen some of these blues already. So I've got the two that are still covered in fluff and are the same fabric. Then I've got this one, which is a little bit of the same fabric, what I had left, I guess. And then this one, and then how did we have it again? This one, right? So those are the kind of blues I've got going on at the moment. Again, I don't know how this coat is gonna to come together. And uh, this isn't one where you're gonna tune in next week and it'll be finished. <laughs> I need to wait until I have more scraps. I did a low volume crumb quilt in kind of more large sections, less square blocks that took me about two years. I'll link to that video in the description if you're interested. So those are the blues at the moment. Then I have, what's the one I have the most of here? Reds. So there's one. And another one. The sun is shining on it, which is making it actually quite hard to see the two different reds. It's just the time of day I'm filming this, sorry. There are two different reds in there. <laughs> then I have one orange one. I'll move the reds over. One orange one, which has started with that color and ends with this color. And then I have some green ones, which don't always all follow the exact pattern. So that one, so you can do it more simplified with more rectangles and things. It doesn't have to be all these little pieces. So this was um, one, there's another one with a little bit of that same fabric there. This one looks more like a quarter log cabin or something, just turned out that way. And this one, I had this piece, I don't even know from what first. So that's the center of the green block there. So there's those ones. And then I've got this one, kind of pink and another pink. I like that one. And then this one is nice, but it's not six inches square. It needs another piece of something to be finished. So that's how far I've gotten. And yeah, the quilt is not gonna be done next week. This will be a long running one, but I thought I'd show you my progress so far. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like scrappy quilt blocks uh, like this, then, and you haven't already subscribed, then please do hit the bell for notifications and do leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Bye.